After the last video, which was the lighting interiors experiment, I thought I'd do a practical application and show you something else that I've uh, unexpectedly discovered in the process. So here we've got uh, a model by Stonemason, I think it's called the Ministry, it's really good. And I've used the um, bridge to bring it over from Das Studio and I've got it set up in the default lighting. And this bluish band here is caused by the haze. I see I can lift the haze up and uh, that gives a sort of a, a, a very low cost ambient effect but it's it's not ideal. It's what more like you'd get in a video game, for example, when uh, when such things were popular. I mean, it's an interesting effect, but I think we can improve on that now with uh, new lighting techniques. So what I'm going to do is go through the steps of setting things up for the interior lighting as per the last video. So I'm going to turn the atmosphere off, set it to fully black, go into the Skylab, check the sun moon. Oh, I'll make sure that intensity is 100. But I'm going to disable the sunlight anyway, uh, just in case I go back and add the sunlight. I don't know if I'm going to do that. Image-based lighting, used to get HDRI image open. I'm going to use one of Horrors, this one called Puddle, which is an outdoor scene. And render, oh, render in scene, but I can't see anything because I've not added it to the sky yet. That's obviously a bit through the skylight. I'm going to increase the brightness of this so it shows up in the sky. Holding the control key down, I can rotate it so we get blue sky showing through the windows and I'm going to light from inside, turn shadow casting off, lower the quality, uh, turn specularity off, increase the effect for now, I don't know how bright to make this, I'll make it 500, include only the background, even though I've not got an object called background in the scene yet, I can still set that, make sure the true ambience optimization is turned off, thank you windows don't know why it keeps doing that but there you go it's just informed me that it's changed my desktop settings thank you okay where was I I'm losing the thread now okay uh, I'll go out of here and give this a quick render see where we are pretty black that's good uh, render options premium effects true ambience set the rays per pixel down TA scattering correction checked boost light checked maximum ray depth I'll drop that down to four for efficiency give that a quick render these fireflies that are arriving in this render now, they are coming from seeing the HDRI backdrop as an image. They're not arriving from any other route because we're targeting something called background, which isn't even in the scene yet, and uh, we're not using Tramlin's optimization. So all those fireflies that can only have one source in this case, just, um, if I uncheck users of backdrop and they go away, just to double check, you can see it's only the backdrop image that's causing those so to clear those up we can create a light source I'm going to give it white family group edit it true ambience optimization have no output from it just to be on the safe side I'll set those to zero use gel include only background and and procedural reset it to default gray and then turn it fully black and then if I enlarge this to encompass the entire scene and then lock it so it doesn't interfere with anything else that will isolate the t true ambience effect from seeing anything beyond that sphere so it won't see the uh, background HDR image so it won't get those fireflies so effectively that is a TA firewall and that's stopping that effect so right what else have we got to do I was going to introduce a light source inside here which is going to be the effect of to light the interior so I'm just positioning it inside this interior space now and we'll see what the effect of that is when we've got it set up I'm going to change it to orange because it's going to be uh, the target of the lighting because I can call it background that'll make sure that it's targeted by the lighting and to get it to work true ambience optimization use gel include only background I'm going to set these to zero just to ensure that it can't have any other effect and in the procedural I'm going to de set it to the default gray and I set that gray to fully white so that'll take advantage of the most diffuse light that's available coming from the backdrop give it a render and see what we've got it's got a bit of light now what I've discovered this is all very similar to the last tutorial really just with a more interesting room to light 
is that you can create as many of these light sources and it hardly slows down the render at all which surprised me because I thought they might act like they were transparent objects but no so I'm going to copy and paste that one and slide it a bit forward and then I'm going to use edit and edit hit the right button multi replicate I'm going to get rid of these scaling values so I'll just set those to 100 okay it's remembered the offset that I've just put in so I'm just going to make um 40 of these so that's created a long line of these potential light sources so I'll just select those and cut them off before the end of the building so I've got a sausage shape of light sources now in this space and at the moment when you multi replicate them even though they've all been spawned from that first one called background they'll all have been given a number helpfully by Bryce but we can soon sort that out and make them all background because this gave it a specific family I can select those light sources go into the attributes and just call them all background and now as if by magic they all get lit so that way I've quickly managed to create a light shape to light the interior of this according to the uh, theory put forward in the previous video so uh, to keep this video short for once what I'll do is stick it onto not depth of field um, maximum raise per pixel and uh, I'll increase this for once because it does give um, it gives more light paths so you get better modeling inside the shadow areas and just see what's going to report on the render time so that's been set up quite quickly I anticipate about an hour that's just a guess at the moment going by the speed with which that's going down and the tests I've previously performed there you go 54 minutes so what I'll do is I'll let that render out and we'll have a look at it in a short while so there's the completed render and well a, a basic lighting setup as you saw it was fairly quick to put together um, some refinements I might to uh, consider if I was going to make this finished render then I think I'd put some uh, light sources where these lights are uh, or convert these into glowing objects themselves by making them targets for the um, HGRI light from inside that could be worth trying uh, maybe uh, reducing the intensity of this backdrop a bit so we've got more of a lit internal scene because if you think about it when you look out the window and it's getting on towards night time uh, it looks very dark outside but if you step outside it seems quite bright because your eyes are adjusting so also this light could probably do with shifting more towards the orange end of the spectrum perhaps but that would mean a change in HDRI image or modifying the light sources so I could change the diffuse color so make them gel lights um, just just go into the light sources here and if I change the the diffuse here or add uh, some yellow ambient or the change the diffuse to yellow so it changes the color of the light as it's processed through the the lighting method so there's a, a few ideas for what might be done to improve this image you might uh, continue to experiment with this since it looks promising so there you go a quick setup using the uh, the experimental lighting method outlined in the last video